It's almost time for the property show brought to you by privateproperty.co.za. The show is happening from the 27th to the 28th of August 2022 at the Santon Convention Center. But also remember, you can join from anywhere you are in the world virtually. Tickets are available at thepropertyshow.co.za. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's episode right here on the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi and tonight we are talking how you can be on top of your real estate game as a real estate agent i am talking training thank you so much to michelle taylor uh, rebel for joining us michelle is from taylor made trading michelle good evening and thank you so much for joining us good evening Dumi. thank you for having me it's an absolute pleasure so let's talk about um, your journey you have been in this industry for a little bit over 10 years now and tell us what prompted you to start taylor um, taylor made training and why it's it's such a passion for you to train real estate agents well, I've actually been in, I've been in the industry for 18 years in total, and I felt that once I'd reached the top of my game, it was kind of some it was kind of a want to give back something to the industry. And what I saw in my time working in real estate that there were some really good candidates that would come into the industry who had great prospects at being really successful agents, but unfortunately, due to a lack of training and knowledge to be imparted upon them left the industry feeling very unsuccessful and that doesn't give one a good feeling and i felt that there was this gap and need specifically for soft skill training because let's be honest real estate is it doesn't come out of a textbook it's mm. you know it's it's on the job and on the go training that is the difference between being an exceptional estate agent and being an estate agent that just really is survives sure could you just give us more information in terms of the kind of skill set um, a real estate agent should have? Because as you said, it's some of the things that, um, it's one of the things rather that um, you can't really learn from a textbook. It, it also requires some sort of personality traits, you know, and some sort of, you know, human resources, human intelligence and, and all of those things. Just talk to us a bit about some of those skills that you think a good real estate agent should have. I think the most important skill is to be good at communication because it's it's a talking business. You're meeting different kinds of people every single day of your life. And not only just being a good communicator and getting your message across clearly and effectively, the, be, the even more important skill is how good a listener are you? Because, you know, it's not always the said conversation that you need to pay attention to. A lot of the times it's what gets left unsaid now that can be picked up if you actually listen very closely to what the person is saying and also to be able to read body language because body language always gives a lot more away than what a person actually vocalizes so for me those those are two really really important skills you know the rest can be learned but if, if you're not good at communicating with people you're definitely going to struggle in this business Hmm. No, totally. Um, you won top award for best units uh, um, of turnover as well as just units um, for for the Chaz Everett um, International from twenty from two thousand and three to twenty ten. Can you just tell us more about what this achievement means to you and what it took for you to get to where you are? Yeah, well, it's a very interesting story because when I first started there, I was told that uh, you know never going to be top you know in the first year or the first two years and i always love a challenge so yeah for myself and the partner that i worked with the goal was that at the end of year one we would be number two but definitely at the end of year number two we were going to be number one and obviously it's, it's not only just important to to be number one but it's also it's about staying there and the way that the the, the whole thing was calculated it wasn't just on turnover but it was also based on number of units but then it was also calculated back to a commission of seven and a half percent plus VAT. so you really had to perform really well to become you know number one in terms of a top partnership but as i said i love a challenge so for me it was exciting and it wasn't real estate wasn't a job it was something that i absolutely got out of bed every morning and just loved doing 
Sure. And, you know, the passion translates, even as we are talking now, I can feel that passion come through. And I want you to just <laughs> talk us through um, that journey, especially when you were currently a, a, a real estate agent. What are some of those things that kept you at number one? Because you, you, you said something very profound. It's like, it's not only about getting there, it's also about staying there. So what are some of those things that you did that set you apart from the rest? Okay, so I love talking to strangers. I don't know why. It was just, it's a skill set that I'm really good at. So I used to actually go into the local pick and pay, which luckily enough was in the area I was based in. And I would just start talking to people and meet people. And what I learned to do very early on was when I had a conversation with a person, was to go back and write all their details in a notebook. And then for me, walking the streets was a big thing because people are, are much more approachable when they actually see a person face to face than kind of doing the what I call the cold calling, which yes, you do have to do in this business. But to me, the face to face approach was much better. The second thing was to look at what could I do to do something for the community to bring them together. So there was a little park that wasn't really used. I approached some of the attorney firms that we, we used to support and I said, come, let's do something for one of the local um, children's homes in the area. And I said, let's do a charity event, Christmas by Carols, well, Carols by Candlelight. I said, let everybody, just even if it was a secondhand toy or gift, bring it together. We'd have raffles, prizes. For me, it was fantastic because I got to meet most of the people that lived in the area that I was working. So they kind of got to know my face and my name. But second of all, they could see that I, I wasn't just an agent that was out there for the business, but to also give something back to the community, to bring community together and show people that you can also do good whilst doing business. Um, I'd say the other really good skill that I, I was exceptional at was listening. So when, when I used to work with a buyer, I listened very closely to what their needs were. And it's, you know, you've got kind of got a needs and you've got a wants. And a lot of people, it's that champagne taste, but be a pocket. So I'd kind of say to them, okay, well, if I can offer you this, could we trade off with that? So by the time mm -hmm. I actually took them out to show them properties, I knew that I had, was almost 90% sure that they were going to put an offer on one of the properties I was going to show them because I'd had a really in-depth conversation with them as to exactly what they were looking for and kind of almost fitted their dream home into their reality and also importantly into their budget. Sure. No, thank you so much for that. And we will just come back to that conversation. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much. And remember to engage with us on the comment section. 500 grand cash is up for grabs. Do, do remember to comment, you know, send those green hearts and also ask us pertinent questions that you feel need to be answered that you might have about anything property related. The winner of yesterday's show will be announced at the end of the show. So make sure, make sure that you stay tuned till then. And also remember that tickets for uh, the property for, for the property show are still up for grabs, so make sure that you engage, engage, engage. Michelle, coming back to our conversation, let's talk a little bit more about some of those achievements that you got when you were still a real estate agent. And tell me about some of your highlights and when how you felt, you know, when you hear your name being called. I mean, this was almost seven years in a row and you are hearing your name being called as the top agent year in and year out. How does it feel for you and how does that translate into the training that you give um, other real estate agents jimmy <laughs> you may not like my answer so much but for me it was never about the accolade it's mm. what i wanted to achieve for myself i came from a poor uh, you know a very poor childhood you know at one stage my mom and i were homeless i knew what it was like to starve and mm. so from a very young age i made the decision that I was going to become financially independent. So that was a very, very big driving factor for me. Unfortunately, I made a few bad mistakes, um, which cost me financially. So when I went into real estate, for me, it was never going to be a part-time business. It was going to become my career mm -hmm. and I was going to be the best that I could be. But I'd have to say one of my highlights or the accolades that I really was very proud of was that I was twice, um, two years in a row, recognized by the NetBank Property Professional Awards, who only recognized the top 1% of the industry. 
And it wasn't just about performance and turnover. It was also about the recognition of what were those agents doing to give back to the industry. Mm -hmm. So it was very tough criteria. Um, you know, at that, at that, in those days, in, in that day, I think we had 75,000 agents. And so to be recognized to be in the top 1% because I only chose 10 in the entire country, um, I think for me was one of my biggest highlights. Sure. No, congratulations still on that because I mean, really, that is a great feat. And as we as we wrap up our conversation, let's talk about some of the uh, skills that you have identified that real estate agents need to get, and some of those skills that also you offer at um, TaylorMade Training. So I think the biggest thing, and, and that's what I always try to tell agents, especially when I do what I call my rookie training, which is for basically the new entrance into the industry. I always say to them, don't be fooled by the fact that a company has taken you on board because you're not employed. The only time you become employed is when you start bringing in listings and stock. Mm -hmm. And when I say stock, I don't mean just anything. I mean, good, saleable or lettable stock. That's the day you become employed. So the most important parts of this business, well, I call it the 80-20 principle. 20% of an agent's time is going to produce 80% of their results. And it all boils down to one activity, and that's prospecting. Prospecting in this business is absolutely, it's critical, it's key. Without it, you're not, you're not going to be in business. So part of my training is obviously prospecting, closing mandates, because that's very important. You know, sole mandated stock is absolutely gold for an agent. And also then, you know, closing the deal and, and negotiating commission because agents sometimes really, really struggle with that. They, they, it's, this job is hard work. It's long hours. It's a lot of effort. And when you get to that final point, the excitement or the, you know, the, the, the nervousness to get this deal signed and sealed kind of sometimes overwhelms them. And then they start giving away their commission. And I go, you're not in this business to walk away with one or two percent you mm. need to understand your worth and you need to negotiate be able to negotiate that worth sure no thank you so much for that michelle you really do need to understand your worth because there's a lot that goes into um doing the work that real estate agents do thank you so much for sharing such great knowledge with us and have a good one pleasure to me thank you for having me thank you bye and that is how we wrap up the conversation tonight, talking how you can stay on top of your game if you are a real estate agent. Also, uh, another thing that I promise you at the end of the show is the winner of that 500 Rand cash prize. And ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please, as we put our hands together for Amanda Gavinder. Thank you so much, Amanda, for interacting with us and engaging with us. You can be like Amanda if you have been engaging with us throughout the episode. Thank you so much for sharing your evening with us. Till we see you again, same time, same please have a good one this year we're back in real life and virtual with content generated in our metaverse studio we've designed the exhibition space to replicate the world's most popular property game and added in activities for the whole family including an indoor park and play area the game board is divided into four journeys namely first time home buyers boulevard investment avenue seller's street and renters road Visit thepropertyshow.co.za for more information and to get your tickets today. The Property Show 2022, 27th to the 28th of August at the Santon Convention Center. No matter where you are on your property journey, we've gathered the experts.